Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy to celebrate the feast of your holy servant, Sister Rafka. You have given her to us as an example of carrying your cross, and you made her the patron of suffering. She repeated the words of the Apostle Paul, I know only Jesus Christ and him crucified. O Lord, may we carry the cross as she once did, with faith, hope, and charity, that with her we may attain what God has prepared for those who love him, that which no eye has ever seen, no ear has heard, and no human heart has conceived. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who filled the heart of Saint Rafka with compassion and embraced her with his fatherly affection, and to the Son who nourished her with the Eucharist and filled her with joy and peace, and to the Holy Spirit, who made her body and soul a holy temple. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast, and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ, our God, you called St. Rafka to work in your vineyard, and she consecrated the first years of her religious life to the service of educating young girls. Then you inspired her to enter a convent of contemplative nuns, where she devoted her life to asceticism, prayer, and service. She became a new apostle, an example of redemptive suffering and a patron for all those who suffer. Now, O Christ, our God, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to keep St. Rafka as a leaven of holiness for our convents and monasteries and for our families. May she be a living example for everyone who suffers, the handicapped, the disabled, the blind and the sick, so that they may carry your cross with love and joy. Sanctify children and the youth, educators and teachers, men and women, monks and nuns, and the sick and the healthy. With Saint Rafka and with your ever Virgin Mother and all the saints who intercede for us, may we glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Saint Rafka, our sister, you suffered with joy and faith. With the fragrance of this incense, pray with us for the sick and the suffering, so that in body and soul they may accept their condition with courage, sharing in the sufferings of the Divine Redeemer. May they be sanctified and in turn sanctify the world unto the glory of God, the Father and the Son, now and forever. Amen. Praise the Lord and exalt him, celebrate the saints with joy, offer praise with pure voices, pleasing to the Lord on high. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, with all the holy ones throughout Achaia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all encouragement, who encourages us in our every affliction, so that we may not be able to encourage those, so that we may be able to encourage those who are in any affliction with encouragement, with which we ourselves have been encouraged by God. For as Christ's sufferings overflow through us, so through Christ does our encouragement also overflow. If we are afflicted, it is for your strength and salvation. If we are strengthened, it is for your encouragement, which enables you to endure 
the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is firm. For we know that as you share in the sufferings, you shall also share in the encouragement. Praise be to God always. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Luke, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, and as they continued their journey, he entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. And Martha, burdened with, with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do all the serving? Tell her to help me. And the Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things, but there is need of only one thing. And Mary has chosen the better part, and it shall not be taken from her. This is the truth, peace be with you. And Mary has chosen the better part, and it shall not be taken away from her. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now we mentioned often that in the old law, under the law of Moses, amongst all the kinds of sacrifices that were offered in the temple, there was one that was known as the sacrifice for the sins of ignorance the things that I do wrong, that I'm not even aware of. 
Now this clashes totally with our modern concepts because in the modern concepts we even excuse things that we know to be bad. So to give sacrifices and to make reparation for things that I know that I have done but I'm not aware of individually, that's an amazing thing. So what is God doing? Because we would think, well, if you don't know about it, well, then it's not a sin, it's just ignorance. So what is God doing in the law of Moses for Israel? He's teaching them. He's teaching them that every action, sinful action, disordered action, just sin is dis disordered, it's a wrong decision. Remember the word sin in Old English just means mistake. This was a mistaken thing, we did it wrongly. And we know in our own lives the decisions that are made, dumb or sinful or otherwise, always have repercussions. There's always effects that flow from decisions, sometimes very small, sometimes large, sometimes lifelong. And so what God is teaching the Israelites under the law of Moses is that every action, every sin, even if we're not even aware of it, still introduces a disorder into God's creation. And that disorder rings out. Fulton Sheen once used an image of sin, talking about it, original sin, talking about creation as like a symphony. And you have this entire piece of music that's being done and you have the clarinet, the player of the clarinet. One of the clarinet players just decide to let out a huge quack in the middle of the piece. Well, that sound reverberates out. It, it disorders the whole piece of music that's going on. You always hear these mistakes. They're human. But every action that we have that's disordered, that's out of place, that is consciously chosen or unconsciously chosen, introduces disorder into the world. And that disorder is what God tries to take and to return to order. This is why taking the very death that comes out of the fall of humanity at the beginning becomes Calvary, to turn it on its head to the resurrection. And so under the law of Moses, God is trying to give the people of Israel a subtlety of understanding of what sin truly is. It's not just about, oh, I screwed up, I'm sorry. It's an understanding that I screwed up and there are effects that last after this. So yes, I'm sorry for my sin, but I've still introduced disharmony. In some cases it'd be my family, my colleagues, my coworkers, my neighbors. It could be all kinds of things. But we've introduced something of a disorder that may take us our entire lives and then some to make reparation. This is the notion of purgatory. This is the reason why in our Syriac tradition we pray for the dead continually that their sins be forgiven. Because these repercussions that we introduce into the world, these disorders that we introduce by our decisions, by our sins, continue on. And so there is purgation, there is purifying. And oftentimes the purifying that God will send to us also are in the sufferings of our own lives. I mean, it's clear that if our grandfather is a gambler and he's wasted all the money of the family in that generation, it's clear that in our generation, we're really hard up. That's pretty straightforward. But we don't understand is that not all the sins that we introduce into the world are so ob obvious. If a father is abusive, if a mother is abusive, it obviously has repercussions upon the children, upon the grandchildren, etc. We know these things, and yet we continue to make dumb and sinful decisions in our lives. It's extraordinary. And so our Lord, when he says to us that if you wish to be my disciple, you must take up your cross and carry it daily, follow me. It's an understanding that that carrying of the cross is not that I wish you pain, but pain will be necessary as part of the reparation that has to make up not only for the individual's own personal sins, but also for all the rest of the disorder that is introduced into the world. This is why the gospel that's chosen today is rather mysterious at first when you look. What does this episode of Martha and Mary have to do at a dinner, have to do with St. Rafka? 
Well, if you read the Gospel of St. Luke, this is chapter 8, I believe. 10, maybe. Sorry. But the main point is that in the context, just before this episode of our Lord arriving at Bethany, it's Bethany, it doesn't say this in the Gospel of St. Luke, but it's Bethany, where he arrives at the house of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, just before this episode is the parable of the Good Samaritan, which you know very well. And after this, at the beginning of chapter 11, is our Lord teaching the Our Father, this is how you pray, that your name be sanctified, that your will be accomplished on earth as it is accomplished among the watchers in heaven with perfection. Because that perfection of the will of God is precisely the harmony and the beauty by which the world is created. We're the ones who mar it. We're the ones who introduce the disorder. Remember, it's the understanding of the word diabolic. Diabolic is to throw something across something, to mar it, to launch something across. It mars, it disorders. That is what sin is. Sin, by its very definition, is diabolic. It is diabolos. It is diabolic. It is throwing something across the original harmony of God's creation. And in this understanding that there is just an objectivity of disorder within the world in every generation, God asks some of his faithful to carry the cross with him. They become, as it were, I don't like to use the term lightning rod because then people think that what it is is God like punishing the world and wanting to cause people to be afflicted and therefore he chooses certain individuals like Padre Pio and then smashes them around for decades. That's not the image. It is not God's wrath, but that these individuals are asked to gather in their own generation, to gather in together in a certain sense in their own lives the disorder, the disharmony, and the sinfulness that their generation continues to introduce into the world. And so they become, from that point of view, yes, lightning rods. But of course, now we know that lightning doesn't come down from the skies and hit the earth. It, by the, by the positive and negative charges, is actually going up, this charge. And with this understanding then, the people that are on the earth, and I've known a number of individuals throughout over three decades of priesthood, who have been very blessed individuals, who have had very simple and hidden lives, and who clearly have been carrying crosses for the sins of many others, and who have been, we call, use the term, and we have used it classically in the Catholic Church, of victim souls. Individuals that God chooses in a generation and says, will you do more? Will you gather in? Not only for those who sin, but will you gather in this generation for those who sin and who do not do reparation, who do not fast, who do not pray, who do not follow discipline? Will you gather in their disorder in my name, the Sacred Heart, in order that they may live? You'll know them on the Day of Judgment. I am sure they will have a special aureole of glory on the day of judgment for having shouldered things that others would not do, even those who are quote unquote good. Because even in our goodness, we are negligent, which is why God taught Israel to make reparation for the sins that you're not even aware of, the sins of ignorance. This is our contemplation for Lent. This is the understanding. And so hence, this episode of Martha and Mary, what is Mary doing? Mary is doing nothing. Mary is being at the feet of our Lord. And that is the essence of the victim souls. They receive. Padre Pio, you all know the stories. The man never left the monastery and yet touched the lives of tens of thousands of people. That's a victim soul. I remember reading about his life, and to understand what this, everyone is like, isn't the stigma, to, isn't it glorious, isn't it magnificent? You can see it when he's offering mass, isn't it stupendous, isn't it magnificent? It's only when you read the story that when this, I think he was only about 29 as a young priest when he received the stigmata, 
to understand what it was is he had finished offering mass. He was in the church making his thanksgiving. Nobody was in the church with him. And the other friars heard the screams come from the chapel. And when they arrived at the church, they found Father Pio on the ground bleeding from his hands and his feet. That one lesson, and to know that throughout his life he limped because of the open holes in his feet, and that he would lose up to a cup of blood each day from his side, that's the stigmata. This isn't just for holy cards and pretty pictures. This is something that the Lord God asked him to carry for decades. That's what it is to be a victim soul. It's the reality of asking to participate in our Lord's passion, death and resurrection, not only for my own sins, but also to gather in the sins of those who are even good, but negligent and lukewarm, let alone for those who are just simply revel in sin and just simply live disordered lives. All of them introduce disorder into this world. It mars, it diabolane, it diabolically mars creation. And those victim souls are such because they are sensitive. They are sensitive to beauty, they are sensitive to grace, they are sensitive to love. And because they are sensitive to these things, they make prayers like Sister Rafka to know deeper our Lord's passion. And as you know well in the story with Sister Rafka, she was also asked for decades to carry crosses from one thing to another, from migraines to blindness, and then gathering up finally with all the previous two, adding to it paralysis. And yet, when the sisters founded the convent towards the end of Sister Rafka's life, and the 12 of them went trundling off to begin the new house of religion, they insisted on taking Sister Rafka with them. She's never going to clean a sink. She's never going to cook a meal. She's never going to help keep the stairwell swept. And yet they knew, because these were supernatural, with a vision of supernatural, these women knew that she has chosen the better part, St. Rafka. And it doesn't really matter if she can't sweep the floor. She's the most important member of this community. This is what it means to be a victim soul. And I would gather that in a world which becomes more and more disengaged from the gospel, so that more and more, even those who are baptized are oblivious to the disservice and disorder they introduce, disservice to God and disorder they introduce into the world, as they become more and more oblivious in their ignorance, that there are more and more people being asked to conduct that disorder of positive and negative disorder of lightning in each generation. I am sure there are many individuals who have been asked to carry crosses which have nothing to do with their lives personally. There are no choices that they have made. There's nothing they have done. There was a woman that I've mentioned to you before that I knew that took 15 years to die of Lou Gehrig's, whose husband was psychotic and a bigamist, quite literally, with one family in Michigan and one family in Ohio. He used to go on many business trips. And when that marriage broke apart, he told her, I will destroy the faith of the children. And he did, all five of their children. He made it his life's journey, of taking the children and the divorce. This woman had done nothing. This woman was a catechist. This woman was golden of heart. When she was mocked, she was belittled. She had a son who was only waiting for her to finally die so he could have the house and bring the woman with whom he was shacked up with to move into the house. And he had no problems basically telling her that. She knew exactly as they circled her deathbed, not really concerned about her. And she was, if I've ever met a saint, she was it. Died in obscurity. So when we look at the life of Sister Rafka, 
framed between the Our Father, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and framed by that goodness and that image of the redemption, which is the parable of the Good Samaritan, we have this episode of Martha and Mary. Our Lord is not rebuking Martha. You're concerned about many things. But there's only one thing necessary, and that's the service of God. He doesn't tell her that what she's doing is wrong. But in that service of God, Mary has chosen the better part, which is to be and to hear. And to those who stand and wait, to those who stand before the divine majesty, that is the life of the desert fathers, the reparation made in those hermitages and the ascetic tradition of the Syriac church. This is why we do penance. This is why we embrace the cross. This is why we have devotion to the sacred heart. It what manifests to us the beauty and the depth of what it truly means to make reparation. It's not an act of pain. It's an act of love. Which is why when our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary, he says to her, all he asks is the return of love for love, to pursue this goodness. And so on this feast of St. Rafka, we ask that she intercede for us, that she obtain for us a more and more profound desire to enter the Sacred Heart in its mystery, and to obtain for us in that depth of the Sacred Heart a greater sense of reparation, which is not pain, but which is purification, which is not pain, but is a return of love for love. When we understand that, then we understand truly who Sister Rafka was. She was not a marathon runner of endurance. She was someone who in this gen her generation learned profoundly what divine charity truly asks of us. She received that love and returned that love as well and as generously as she could by God's grace. May that also be a gift given to us in our own little way. And may her prayers be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, might from might, true God from true God, begotten of me, consubstantial with the Father, who made him all things for me, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated in the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious plan. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, coming in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the door of the Lord of God, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The Lord and the Lord to come. Amen. <coughs>
Almighty Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Rafka. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the repose of Deborah Lynn Rennie. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. John Marin on page 897. 897. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Good and holy God and Father, through your only Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have prepared the spiritual and holy banquet for us. Accept these pure offerings and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to approach your sanctuary with pure hearts and clear consciences. Grant us the peace that your only Son gave to his holy disciples, so that we may give one another that same peace with a holy kiss. We raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. O Lord, may your peace and security and your love, grace, and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we bow before you and ask that your merciful right hand Rest upon your servants who are here before your majesty. Mark us with the sign of life that we may raise glory to you 
now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Father of mercies, Lord of creation, Lord of the universe, unsearchable God, you are the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, born of you and equal to you. He is the radiance of your glory, the image of your being, and by your power, the maker of all. In him you created the world in your grace. In him we see you, and from him we receive your spirit. In him the mystery of the Trinity, hidden from all ages, was revealed. We praise and thank you with our mouths that have been blessed by your word and cleansed with your forgiving hyssop. Those who glorify you are countless, cherubim and seraphim, thousands of spiritual beings standing before you, and myriads of fiery ranks serving your majesty. They sing triumphant hymns with harmonious voices. O Lord, although we are your weak and sinful children, make us worthy through the gift of your grace to sing with them and to proclaim. Glory to you, Lord. You have exalted our human nature through your grace. In your abundant mercy, you sent your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, into the world. He came down to us and by the Holy Spirit, we can flesh of the Virgin Mary, accomplishing all things for our salvation. Kyrie eleison, wabiyam mohadoptam chashod ilayim abed chayyim, ansab lachma bidao kori shanto ubarachu kodesh. Waxo ya ben tarmita kado maran sabachula mehne kulchun hono denita fachano dil dachlo faikun wachlov sagiye metachseu metihem. Hussein, <laughs> We are in Talmida, Kado Mara, Sabish Tawa Mene, Kulukun, Ho no Denita, Demo Dila Dia Tiki Hadato, Dahlo Faikun, Wahlov Sagi, Et Shadu Meti Hab. Husoyon, Hombe, Hoye, Donakalam, Alami. Do this in memory of me, for whenever you gather in my name and eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. remember all that you suffered endured for us and your liberating and life-giving plan of salvation 
Your miraculous incarnation, your saving passion, your life-giving cross, and your life-giving death. Your solemn burial, your joyous resurrection, your ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of the Father, and your second coming when you shall reward all people according to their deeds. O Lord, have compassion and pour out your mercy upon all of us, that we may enjoy the gifts of your heavenly church. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, we pray to be blessed. Lord, the gates of heaven may be opened, and the healing of Christ's glorious love, and may your Holy Spirit come, descend, and rest upon us, upon this offer, and may be for the pardon of faults, and the forgiveness of sins, for those who share. Annin monio, annin monio, annin monio, nite morro ho chayu kodisho, ona chenda lainu alu kurbono. Through these holy mysteries, may sinners be absolved and enemies be reconciled. May those who hate find peace, and those who are sad find joy. May those who grieve be consoled, and those who are sick be healed. May those who find those in distress find comfort, and those who be hot repent be humbled. May the prophets be remembered, the apostles honored, and all the martyrs crowned. And may the confessors exult, and all the angels rejoice. May your divinity be praised and your trinity be honored, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice, the memorial of your passion, crucifixion, death, and resurrection for your church throughout the world. She is grounded upon your hope, remembers your salvation, and awaits your kingdom. We offer for the bishops of the true faith. Grant them the wisdom and knowledge that comes from you, and make them worthy to proclaim your kingdom, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. May all the shepherds of the church sanctify their days by caring in fear and in justice for your people that you have entrusted to them. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, priests and deacons here and everywhere who serve diligently and are vigilant over their flocks. May they receive their reward. Remember those who have taken vows of chastity and holiness, who keep their bodies and thoughts pure, that they may try unto their efforts. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. 
Lord, in the sweetness of your compassion, receive the souls of our brothers and sisters, the children of baptism, who have gone to you in the true faith from this world of darkness, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered. May the mystery of your body and blood be a pledge of life for them, a fire that consumes all sins and a burning coal that destroys transgressions. In your mercy grant them rest in the dwellings of light and joy in the heavenly Jerusalem. O lover of all people, grant us life, abundant blessings and mercy, and forgive our sins and theirs. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you. And join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will, that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O Lord, adorn our souls with your truth and sanctify us by your holy gifts. May you dwell among us that we may be secure. May your peace dwell within our hearts, your faith abide in our consciences, and your cross be a true sign of protection for your church. May our tongues proclaim your truth and repeat your holy prayer and our lips pour forth glorious thanks to you, that with you we dare to call the Father Abba, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of thine. Amen. O Lord, do not lead us, your lowly children, into temptation, 
but deliver us from all evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el Kolchun. O Lord, we have approached your holy altar, the source of divine gifts. May we share in your holy mysteries and join the assembly of those who glorify you, that we may raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the most holy trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever. The forgiveness of our sins and for eternal life. Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and your raised glory to you, for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, O God, Father of great mercy, and we praise and glorify you for having made us worthy of your holy banquet and of sharing in your life-giving mysteries. We implore you, do not condemn us on that fearful day, but deliver us from all shame and disgrace, that we may join the assembly of your saints, so that with them and among them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el O Christ, the King of glory, we entrust our lives to you, knowing that you shall take care of our needs. Help the elderly with your mighty power. Restrain the young with your guidance. Nurture children and instruct them in your divine teaching. And sign each one of us with your victorious cross. To you be glory, with your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.